Now, in order to do CVP analysis, there's one major concept that you need to be aware of, and that is the contribution margin. Now, the contribution margin is defined as the amount remaining from sales revenue after variable expenses have been deducted. This represents the incremental increase in net operating income for one additional unit sold. So this is a really good kind of basic level CVP analysis. It gives you a number at the end that says, okay, if I sell one more unit of this product, how much will my net operating income increase by? So it's just nice, again, for very quick decision-making ability. Now, the equation for this, there's actually two. We can do it in kind of two ways. We can do it from the total perspective. So the total contribution margin, or CM, equals sales revenue minus your total variable cost. So again, total equals total minus total. So we're, we're staying all these numbers being a total amount. Or we can do it in a per unit format. We can also say unit contribution margin equals the unit sales price minus the unit variable cost. These are going to give us uh, two different types of contribution margin, but they mean the same thing. So let's look at an example here. Let's assume the company has the following income statement. So that gives us, and this is broken down in a contribution formatted income statement. So it's already done it for us. We've got our sales, our variable cost, gives us our contribution margin, fixed cost, and our net operating income. So if it were to ask us what is our contribution margin using the total amounts, then we would say sales revenue of 25000 minus the variable cost of 10000 Subtract that out. That's going to give us a contribution margin of 15000 which again, it kind of says that already in the contribution formatted income statement. However, let's look at what it would look like if we did it on a per unit format. Well, we would have to create these per unit amounts and it, thankfully it gives us the number of units that were sold. So per unit, if we totaled 25,000 and we sold 500 units, if we divide 25,000 by 500 units, that's gonna give us a per unit sales price of $50. If we do the same thing for variable cost, 10,000 divided by the 500 units, because again, variable cost is dependent on the number of units, so they go up at the same rate as the sales. Uh, so 10,000 divided by 500 units, that's gonna give us a variable cost of 200, or excuse me, $20. Subtract that out, that's gonna give us uh, our unit contribution margin. So if we look at our equation, unit contribution margin equals unit sales price minus unit variable cost, sub substitute $50 for the unit sales price, substitute $20 for the unit variable cost, subtract that out, that's going to give us a $30 unit contribution margin. What does that mean? Well, that means if I sold one more unit than I am, so instead of selling 500 units, if I sold 501 units, what would be the outcome? Well, the outcome based on this right here would be a $30 increase in my net operating income. So we would think that our net operating income would be $10,030. Well, let's see if that comes true. If I increase it by one unit, so 501, that means my total sales would be $25,050 because it's an extra $50. My variable cost would be $10,020 because, again, an extra $20 in variable cost, which means my contribution margin this moment would be $15,030. Now, if I subtract out fixed cost, fixed cost has nothing to do with how many units I sell. So no matter if I sell 501 or 520 or 590 or whatever it may be, the fixed cost is going to remain the same. So I'm going to still keep it at 5,000. So subtract 5,000 from the 1530. That means my net operating income will again increase by $30. That is the importance of the contribution margin. Now we can take this one step further and look at the contribution margin ratio. Contribution margin ratio gives you a lot of information and you don't have to have the context behind it. So this represents the incremental increase in the net operating income for every one additional dollar sold. Not one unit, but one dollar. So in order to understand the contribution, you need to have the context of if I sell this one extra unit, I need to know what that unit is. Well, contribution margin ratio, I don't. I just need to know the dollar and we know the dollar. So how do we do this? Well, again, it kind of comes in two equations. Our contribution margin ratio is equal to either the contribution margin, the total contribution margin, divided by the total sales revenue, or again, we can put this into per unit format and say unit contribution margin divided by the unit sales price. So let's look at the same uh, example that we just did. Assume the company has the following same income statement. Nothing's changed there. If we want to know that the, the contribution margin ratio, then what we would do is we would say total contribution margin equals sales revenue. My total contribution margin was 15000 Okay, that's given to us. And then my sales revenue will be 25000 Or I could do this the same way with the per unit format. I could say my unit contribution margin is 50 divided by the unit 
uh, variable cost, which is, or excuse me, the unit contribution margin is 30, divided by the unit sales price, which is 50. Both of those are going to give me the same answer, which is going to be my contribution margin of 0.6. What does that mean? That means for every $1 extra that I sell, my net operating income will go up by 60 cent. And that's the importance of contribution margin and contribution margin ratio.